welcome back to a new video. I'm currently recording this on Wednesday morning. Uh, the draft is Thursday night. Um, if anything crazy happens within the 24 hours between now and then, you know, I guess that's just shitty luck. I don't know. Uh, today we're doing my fifth and final mock draft. I thought about making it multiple rounds. Just can't be asked, honestly. Um, I'm doing this one a little bit different. In the past, I have tended to draft according to how I view players instead of how I think teams view players. Because um, there's a lot of guys that are projected to go a lot higher than what I think that they should. And in the past, like last year, my mock draft was completely wrong because of that. Uh, it would have been better if I drafted according to how I think teams will draft instead of how I think teams should draft. So I'm trying to keep that in mind with this one. Uh, which is why I have Trayvon Walker first overall. Player number 12 on my board. Um, I can see the appeal of why the Jaguars would want to go with Trayvon Walker first overall. From what I can tell right now, they are between Aiden Hutchinson, Trayvon Walker, and Akem. Uh, it seems more realistically that they're between Tra Trayvon Walker and Akem. Um, the thing is, from what I can tell, with you have like two sides of the organization fighting for each guy, but the side that's fighting for Trayvon seems to be of more authority. So for me personally, it does seem like Trayvon gets the override here and is the first overall pick. Second overall, Aiden Hutchinson. Um, I think these two go first and second regardless. I think if one passes on one, the next, if the Jags pick Aiden, Trayvon goes to the Lions. Uh, I know the Lions could potentially trade down here. The Texans at three could trade down. Uh, the current report is a lot of teams want to trade down, but not a lot of teams want to trade up. So realistically, I think the only teams looking to trade up seriously, the Saints, Steelers, um, I think there's somebody else that's done some framework in order to maybe trade up. Um, I mean, even the Texans, if they want to trade up from 13 back into the top 10 or something, um, I think ch the Chargers, there's some teams that might trade up, but there's a lot of teams that might trade down. Uh, the Texans are looking to trade down. The Panthers at six have talked about trading down. The Giants at seven, uh, a lot of potentials for teams to move around in the draft. I think we might see a record number of trades in the first round, honestly, um, but seeing as I'm playing in a world without trades, I think that this pick, from what I can tell, the Texans are between, they're between Ahmed Sauce Gardner and Ikem. And I think that this is Ikem. From what I can tell, all signs indicate that they like Ikem more. Um, and I think it, you know, it makes sense. Ikem's probably the best rush blocker in this entire draft. I've kind of come around to him. I think he's a top 10 player in the draft now. Um, just had to really think it over. Uh, he could play guard for you if you want him to, uh, which is a huge flex. Like that's, Having O guard flexibility is massive. And t typically players that have that flexibility go a lot earlier. The players that usually get picked earlier than I think they should, it usually comes down to either having that flexibility or being a ridiculous athlete like Trayvon Walker is. Um, coming in at number four, from what I can tell, the Jags are also in between Akem and Sauce Gardner, which means if Akem's off the board, they will go for it, for Sauce Gardner. Um, realistically, I don't think Sauce Gardner escapes the top ten, or even the top five, really. Um, from what I can tell, the Giants are between two players right now in Evan Neal and Jermaine Johnson. Uh, I think they certainly go Evan Neal with the first pick, seeing as the Panthers. They, they pick at five and seven. The Panthers are in play for a tackle at six, so you have to take him first. So I think Evan Neal has to be the pick at five. Um, coming in at number six for the Panthers, realistically, there's... I think that this is the first pick where there's a serious 50-50 split here. Uh, they could go quarterback in Malik Willis. They could go with Charles Cross. Uh, reports also say they like Kenny Pickett. Um, reports currently say they like Kenny Pickett more than Malik Willis. But also, they've talked about trading back here. And I think realistically, 
Out of all the picks, I think the sixth pick is the most realistic to see swapped here. Um, if I had to take a wild guess, I think I think that the Panthers... I think they moved back from 6th to 16th, honestly. I think that's probably what makes... Or honestly, give me the Vikings. I think real. I think the Vikings jump up here. And I think if they do, they take Derek Stingley. Um, Derek Stingley probably isn't going to escape the top 10. I think jumping from 6 to 12 to get him, that makes sense to me. But since we're living in a world without trades, I'm going to go with Charles Cross. Uh, there's a very serious belief that the Seahawks could pass on a quarterback. Uh, and if they do, I think Charles Cross is easily the most in play. Um, hold up. Eh. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, I have my notes here because, like I said, I'm drafting based on what I think teams will do. So, kind of hard to remember all the, all the reports and whatnot that's coming out. Um, at number seven, if he's on the board still... Uh, all signs indicate that this is Jermaine Johnson. Um, I like Kayvon more, but teams apparently aren't super high on Kayvon. He's still probably a top 10 guy. Uh, from what I've heard, he's definitely not in play for the Jets or the Giants in the top 10. Um, they both prefer Jermaine Johnson over him. So I think Jermaine Johnson at 7 makes sense to me. Uh, the name that's con consistently thrown around with the Falcons is Drake London. The Falcons like Drake London a lot. Um, it wouldn't surprise me to see Kayvon come off the board at 8 here. Uh, but I think that this has got to be Drake London. I think the need at wide receiver trumps the needed edge for the Atlanta Falcons. And I think Drake London, with his size profile, he's one of those guys that is pretty enticing to draft. And I think he goes here. Uh, if you're the Seahawks here, I think that this... I mean, they could look to trade this. They could even go with Kayvon at 10. It wouldn't really surprise me. Um, teams are really high on a guy like Trevor Penning. I could see the Seahawks realistically drafting Trevor Penning here. Um, I'm going to go Malik Willis. Get the first quarterback off the board. I think that's a pick that could be moved potentially, but I think Malik Willis at 9 makes sense. Um, at number 10 after Malik... I mean, even though the reports currently say that the Jets are higher on Jermaine and that Kayvon's not in play for them, I just don't buy that if he's still around at 10, they won't do it. I think they like Jermaine Johnson more, and if he's around at 10, they'll take Jermaine Johnson. But I think realistically, at 10, if Jermaine Johnson's off the board and you're looking to improve your team, I think Kayvon is in play with the 10th pick. So I'm going to go Kayvon at 10. Uh, at number 11, the football team, Drake London is also a name that's been heavily thrown around for Washington. The two names for Washington that I've heard are Drake London and Kyle Hamilton. Um, I think this could be Derek Stingley, too. I think it could be Garrett Wilson, but that's just not what the reports say. And I think this is probably where we see Kyle Hamilton go, probably about where he should go. Uh, so I'm going to take Kyle Hamilton off the board at 11. Um, at number 12 with the Minnesota Vikings, I think that this is where we see Derek Stingley come off the board. The report, I think the team will probably trade into the top 10 to take Derek Stingley. I really do. Derek Stingley will be a top 10 pick. Uh, it might take a team moving up there. It might take a team drafting against their needs. But I think Derek Stingley will be a top 10 pick. And I think the Vikings at 12, if he's around, would be extremely happy with that. Uh, the Texans would probably be extremely sad that he's not around. Um, they could look to go edge. I just don't really think that there is the value at edge in this spot. Um, a lot of these guys, there are reports saying that Carl Loftus probably is going to fall out of the second round. Obviously, David Ajabo is probably not in play in the first round. Um... So what do you look to do here? Uh, I think that this is Andrew Booth, personally. Um, this, like I said, this is a, this could be a trade up or trade down spot. I think that they could move from thirteen, like they're a team that I think could jump up from thirteen to six or seven, in order to take Derek Stingley, honestly. Um, but if they're around at thirteen still and he's not on the board. 
I think they take Andrew Booth. Um, I really like Andrew Booth. Teams seem to be high on him. Teams are also very high on Trent McDuffie. Um, but I think Andrew Booth at 13 makes a lot of sense for the Texans. I've mocked them, Andrew Booth, a lot. Now, realistically, if I was the Ravens, right? If I was the Ravens, I'm taking Kenyon Green or Trent McDuffie. But a player that I've heard thrown around in the Ravens circles that their organization is very, very high on is Jordan Davis, which I think is the highest I've ever mocked Jordan Davis because I personally don't view him as being this high on the board. I accidentally right-clicked instead of left-clicked. That's embarrassing. But the Ravens really like Jordan Davis. Uh, if they view him as the best player on the board, why not take him? Um, I don't think it's the biggest position in need for the Ravens, but I do think that Jordan Davis does not escape the top 15. Um, he's too polarizing of a player to do so, regardless of how I view him. I think teams view him better than I do. So I think he's in play at 14 here. I think it makes sense. Like I said, they could go with a guy like Trent McDuffie, but Jordan Davis is better than Trent McDuffie, regardless, like regardless of how I view the players. Uh, Kenyon Green is definitely in play, but how much you value, I mean, I guess D-tackle and guard are about the same value, but if you, you, if you think Jordan Davis can play the edge, I think that the Ravens look to take a chance on a guy with a huge upside here in Jordan Davis. Uh, coming at number 15, this is a clear pick, even the, the Eagles have even hinted at it. If Jamison Williams is on the board at 15, he's basically a lock to go to the Eagles. Uh, I've mocked that pretty consistently, I think it's pretty set in stone. Um, the Saints, I think they, they spend this first pick on Kenny Pickett, for sure. If Kenny Pickett's on the board and you have QB2 around, take Kenny Pickett, without a doubt. Uh, at number 17, again, something that I've mocked consistently, and it seems... I mean, I, it wouldn't surprise me at all, actually, to see the Chargers go with a guy like Devontae Wyatt. I think Devontae Wyatt is definitely in play. Um, I think I think even Devin Lloyd here. Devin Lloyd could be something that we see the Chargers do. But I think they they look for a guy like Trevor Penning. From what I can tell, teams are very, very high on Trevor Penning. Uh, higher than I am, but I think he's definitely worth a 17 overall pick. Uh, at number 18 with the Eagles. Um, they're high on Jameson Williams. Nobody really knows too much about what they want to do after that. It wouldn't surprise me at all to see Kenyon Green come off the board here. Not in the slightest. Um, but how do you view a guard when Trent McDuffie's around, you know? Corner has more need, or has a higher need than guard. Uh, it's a more impactful position normally. Um, P teams are very high on Trent McDuffie. I'm very high on Trent McDuffie. Uh, I think it makes a lot of sense here at 18. And then I think at 19, I think the Saints look to a wide receiver here. Um, I think very realistically it could be Chris Olave. I think it could also be Garrett Wilson. I think those are probably the two that make the most sense. I don't think that the Saints could really look to go anywhere else than wide receiver with the second pick, though. I'm going to go Chris Olave because it gives, it fills a hole for the Saints and gives them a wide receiver that's different from everything that they have. Uh, I think Chris Olave at 19 makes sense. I don't view Chris Olave that highly, honestly. Um, I think he's, what, like 45th on my board or something like that. But again, I think teams view Chris Olave's upside very highly. And I think the Saints definitely go wide receiver with the second pick. Coming in at number 20, I am fairly certain. I mean, I think the Saints probably trade up too. But I am almost, ex I'm very certain that the Steelers probably move. I don't think they stay at 20. Uh, the current report is that they are talking to the Giants about the seventh pick. Uh, it'd probably take giving up a next year first round pick, which would suck. But they really like Malik Willis. If he's around at seven, they will make that move. I'm almost certain of it. But what do you do if you sit back at 20? They like quarterbacks. They like the quarterbacks in this class. Uh, they like Ritter. They like Coral. They like Howell. I think these three are all in play at 20. Um, I think they could go with a guy like Daxton Hill if he's around. Even though they just signed Terrell Edmonds to a one-year deal. 
it's a one-year deal, you know? It doesn't really give you longevity past that, and obvi- it's quite obvious that they were looking to replace Terrell anyways because they took so long to re-sign him. Uh, and they just signed him back because the market was nice. Um, I think that they could look to go corner here. Teams like Roger... Teams really like Kyir Alam and Kyler Gordon, honestly. And there's also Roger McCreary. I think that's very much in play. Uh, but the Steelers also have said that they're not going to reach this year. That they are going to go by the best player available mindset. Regardless of what is a need. And I think that's Garrett Wilson. Um, they could look to go with a spot that maybe they need more, like corner. They could look to address offensive line further. Um, but I think Garrett Wilson at 20 is a huge steal. Um, I think he's certainly better than Chris Olave. Uh, right now, the Steelers are in a very bad place where they only have two wide receivers on their roster, really. Uh, they did just get Miles Boykin, but I don't really think that makes a big difference. They do not have a wide receiver three in Pittsburgh, and I, it's pretty apparent that they're going to need one. Um, so I think Garrett Wilson makes sense. Maybe not the biggest position to need, but probably the best player on the board. I'm pretty sure he's my, I, he's wide receiver one for me. It's close between him and some other guys. I think Jamison Williams is probably the most talented wide receiver in this draft, but with his injury concerns and everything else, and it, even with him having the most talent, he's here, like everybody else is right under him. Uh, in a class that I think is so close an injury like that can bump you from wide receiver one to I think he's wide receiver three, um, just because he was so close to the other guys before that. Uh, the Patriots at 21. Again, I think that this is where we could see Kenyon Green come off the board. For sure. Jahan Dotson, Jalen Burks, makes sense. Uh, they could even address corner if they wanted to. But I think that this is Devin Lloyd. Uh, Devin Lloyd, for me, is a top 10 player. I think Devin Lloyd is phenomenal. Uh, best player available at the spot that you're picking at a position that you do need. Um, I think Devin Lloyd makes sense at 21. Uh, 22. How do I feel about this? I, I mean, I think they got to go wide receiver, right? Um, the only question for me, I mean, it wouldn't also, it, it wouldn't surprise me at all to see Devonte Wyatt come off the board to the Packers. It would not surprise me in the slightest. Um, but I think the need at wide receiver is too much. Mm. I actually think I've changed my mind. <laughs> I've changed my mind. I'm going to go Devontae Wyatt. Does that make sense? No. No? I'm going to go wide receiver. Yeah, I've changed my mind again. My bad. Um, they like Devontae Wyatt. Uh, and I was going to say pick him here because it's such a deep wide receiver class, but I think it makes more sense to go wide receiver because there's teams in between their picks that could steal a wide receiver. And I think this is Jahan Dotson. I think I think Traylon Burks is the other option that makes a lot of sense. Maybe George Pickens, David Bell could even be in play. But I think Jahan Dotson makes the most sense here. At 23, I'm pretty certain that the Cardinals look to go corner. Um, realistically, I think cornerbacks in play for them. Uh, for me, it's between Kyir Alam and Kyler Gordon. I'm gonna go Kyler Gordon, actually. Teams seem to be very high on Kyler Gordon. Um, Kyir Alam has injury problems. I think Kyler Gordon's probably a safer pick. Uh, and it's a good pick, honestly. I like Kyler Gordon. I think that they need to address cornerback, so it's a good place to go. Um, now, the report around the Cowboys is that they are looking for... They're between three different players. Uh, they're between Traylon Burks. What is it? It's Traylon Burks. I think it's... Uh, Traylon Burks, Zion Johnson is one of them. I think it's Kenyon Green, Zion Johnson, and Traylon Burks. Uh, just given their needs and what I think their philosophy is, I think Traylon Burks comes off the board here. Um, again, I don't think it, it wouldn't surprise me to see any of the three of them come off the board. 
but I think that's what makes the most sense. Um, at 25, I think that this is realistically a spot where we could see the first running back come off the board. I think that this is about the like top of where I expect the running backs to go. Uh, I don't think it is. I don't think any of them actually slip into the first round, but it wouldn't be shocked to see them in this 25 on space. Um, they could look to address corner. I think it's a big need. Kyra Lom's around. Roger McCreary's around. Uh, you could take David Bell here. I think that would make a lot of sense. But I'm going to give them Kenyon Green, personally. It's not the biggest need in the world. Their O-line wasn't great, though. Uh, you could look to address either guard spot. He could play either guard for you. Um, he could be a long-term option, and he could be an instant upgrade. But I think that the Bills probably look to pick the best player available in their spot at a position that could help them. And I think that's Kenyon Green, for sure. He's a top-five player on my board. I love Kenyon Green. I think Kenyon Green, in my opinion, is one of the five players that I think could be an all-pro at the next level. Um, I think Kenyon Green could develop into being one of the best guards in football. And I think you'd be extremely lucky to get him at 25. The current report for the Titans, oddly enough, is that they are looking to go offensive line. They either want to go offensive line or Desmond Riddler, or Ritter. Um, I don't buy that they're going to go with Desmond Ritter. I really don't. I think that they're one of those teams that's going to wait for next year's quarterback class before they make a decision. So I think that this is a lineman. Um, there's no tackle that's worth taking, which leaves the interior. Um, which leaves you with Zion Johnson or Tyler Linderbaum. Um, Tyler Linderbaum's great, but I don't think that the Titans need to replace center as much as they need a guard. So I think they take Zion Johnson out of Boston College just because they need a guard more than they need a center. And Tyler Linderbaum's a center. If they think they can move him to guard, they'll draft him here. But I don't think that's in play. Uh, the Buccaneers. The Buccaneers could do a lot of things. Wouldn't surprise me to see Linderbaum come off the board here. Wouldn't surprise me to see wide receiver or corner. But I'm going to go safety here. Uh, probably the best player left on the board. I don't know. Let me see. Probably... No, he's third on the board. Um, Devontae Wyatt also isn't the most impossible pick here. But I think a guy like Daxton Hill makes the most sense. Address safety now. Uh, they have a need at safety. I think Daxton Hill's phenomenal, honestly. Uh, I think he's criminally underrated in this class. And I think, I mean, he, especially as a guy that might slip out of the first round. As a day two guy, he's going to be a phenomenal steal. Um, and I think he makes a lot of sense at 27 to Tampa Bay. Um, at 28, even with that moral dilemma I had earlier, they I think they go Devontae Wyatt. The reports say that they like Devontae Wyatt. They need an interior guy. Makes sense to me. Um, at number 29, from what the reports say, again, I'm going off what teams will do and not what I think they should do. Uh, the Chiefs are very high on Boyamafe. They like Boyamafe a lot. I see it. I'm not as high on Boyamafe, but I get the appeal of a guy like Boyamafe. Um, probably not the best possible pick, and I think you could argue that they need a wide receiver or a cornerback a lot more than they need that. But it's just what reports are saying. that They really like Boyamafe. Now, wide receiver, corner, I think it's obvious that the next pick has got to be one of those two. Um, I think, I think David Bell, Sky Moore, and George Pickens are all in play here. Wouldn't surprise me to see any, to see either of these two corners come off the board either. But if you're the Chiefs, what do you look to do? I think, I think I'm going to give him David Bell. I think David Bell makes sense. Um, again, would not be surprised to see Kair Alam come off the board at that spot, but I think they need a wide receiver more than they need a corner at the moment. Plus, they addressed defense with one pick. It makes sense to go on the other side of the ball the next pick. The Bengals. Um, I think this is a corner. I think if Kair Alam is around, I think that's probably the pick. 
it would make sense for Tyler Linderbaum to go here. From what I've heard, though, also, apparently Tyler Linderbaum, rumor says that he's going to fall out of the first round. I don't think he should. Again, he's a, also a top five player on my board. He's one of those guys that I think could be an all pro player. But how much value does a center have at the next level? You know, I don't know how many teams are going to prioritize a center over other positions and teams like Kair Alam. So I'm going to give the Bengals Kair Alam at 31. And then at 32, again, this is another pick I've gone back and forth with a ton. The Lions could shock everybody and take a guy like Desmond Ritter. I think that's definitely in play. Sam Howell, even Matt Coral. I just think there's too many holes on defense to justify it. It wouldn't surprise me to see Nicobe Dean come off the board here uh, at all. I think Nicobe Dean is definitely in play. There are The current reports also say that Nicobe Dean probably falls. And the teams are very high on Quay Walker. I think I convinced myself, actually. I don't know what it is. Originally, I had Lewis Seen as the pick, which I think would make more sense. But I think Quay Walker's the pick. Do I think it should be? No, definitely not. But teams love Quay Walker a lot. Um, for whatever reason, it seems like a Lions pick to me. I don't know if that makes any sense to anybody else, but sometimes I just look at a player when I'm doing this it's like, yeah, that seems like, he seems to fit there. That just seems like something that, like a player that they would pick. And that's kind of the impression I get from Quay Walker and the Lions. Again, usually wrong. You know, I don't got some like spidey instinct going on or anything. I'm almost always wrong. And I will be here too. There's a lot of guys here that should go higher than, than they will, should go much higher. And guys that I think will be drafted way higher then I think they should. I mean, we have a player here fall to 10 that's second on my board. So we have a top five player on my board not even go in the first round just because I think that's what, I think this is what's going to happen. Given everything that I've read on what teams are thinking, this seems to make the most sense to me. Again, I'm not the happiest with it because there's a lot of players here that I'm not huge on. Um... Anywho, I'm not going to be able to make a top 100 board. Uh, I thought I might be able to. I was wrong. Very wrong. Uh, I, got, I got to really thinking about it. If I were to make a top 100 board, it would take me hours. It would take me like 10 hours probably total in order to record it all and then do individual edits with, with each player and make like a separate like display screen. I don't have it in me. And the opportunity cost of me putting all that time in for like, I don't know, 10 views, I just don't think I have it in me. Um, anyways, if you guys want to take a look at some of this, feel free. Um, this is my current board. There's a lot of people that I haven't got to yet, scouting-wise, that I think could be top 10 guys, like Christian Harris, uh, Channing Tindall. Um, I think Alante Taylor's probably top 10. Kobe Bryant is a guy that a lot of people like. Zion McCollum, Josh Joby. Um, that's really it, honestly. Um, I've scouted 153 so far, so take that as you will. Uh, Windermeyer at 100. Matt Ariza, Sam Williams, Cordell Volson, Drake Jackson. Uh... Pettit Freer, Jack Jones is another guy that a lot of people like, Desmond Riddler, Ritter at 93, Cole Strange, Jake Ferguson, Greg Dulcich. You guys can pause it at any point um, if you guys feel like it. Uh, these are the strengths that I have for each player, and these are the weaknesses. Some of these obviously get cut off, but uh, the ones in blue here are guys that I think are going to get drafted a lot sooner than they should just due to, like I said, that flexibility or extreme athleticism or... Maybe their character, maybe they're a special team stud. Those are the guys that in the later rounds are going to get picked consistently, or even like in the second or third round. In the third round on, if you can get a player that will make an impact in some way immediately, it's a pretty safe option. Uh, I mean, is there anything here that I'd like to highlight? 
Um, there's Quay Walker at 71 for me. He's a guy that's going to go a lot sooner than I think he should just due to pure athleticism, honestly. Um, not the best coverage guy in the world, though. Nick Cross is another guy that, due to his speed and athleticism, probably goes sooner. Uh, there's Sam Howell at 67. Uh, who else? There's Kyler Gordon for me at 54. Charlie, Charlie Collier is a guy that I like a lot. DeMarvin Leal at 51. Jaquan Brisker at 50. There's Chris Olave at 47. Uh, not very high on Chris Olave. There's Boyamafe at 46. Trey McBride at 43. I like him a lot. Uh, 42, Trevor Penning. Uh, let's see. Matt Coral at 37. Kenny Pickett right above him. I have these two tied, honestly. I can't really tell the difference between the two. Uh, in the way of what I think they'll be at the next level, they are as close as you can get. Kair Alam at 36. Malik Willis at 33. Roger McCreary at 32. George Pickens, David Ajabo. Jordan Davis at 29. Devontae Wyatt. Arnold Abiki at 27. Kenneth Walker at 26. I like Kenneth Walker a lot. Uh, Dax Nail at 25. Jahan Dotson. Lewis Seen. George Carl Loftus. Zion Johnson. Nicobe Dean. So here you see a 22nd player and a 20th player on my board, both when undrafted. It's just the way that I think NFL teams value these guys, especially given the positions. Um, I do have a punter in my top 100 right now. I don't think that'll stand as I get more guys done, but I do think Matt Arise is a name to look out for because I think he'll probably be a third-round pick, third- or fourth-round pick. Uh, Traylon Burks, Jermaine Johnson, Andrew Booth, Jameson Williams at 15. Trayvon Walker at 14, Evan Neal, Devin Lloyd, Charles Cross at 11. Uh, so Devin Lloyd's 12th on my board. And then my top 10. At 10, Drake London. At 9, Derek Stingley. At 8, Kyle Hamilton. At 7, Garrett Wilson, who I think is wide receiver 1. I don't think he should fall at all. Um, I mean, but look at the other guys. Drake Jackson gives Washington something that they don't have. Um... Chris Olave also gives the Saints something that they do not currently have. I don't think Garrett Wilson will be around at 20. I don't think he should be. Uh, I know the Eagles are extremely high on Jamison Williams. So it wouldn't surprise me to see Garrett Wilson fall. And if he falls into the Steelers' laps, I'm not going to complain. Uh, player number seven, Garrett Wilson. Ikem is sixth on my board. Kenyon Green at five. Tyler Linderbaum at 4, Ahmed Sauce Gardner at 3, Kayvon Thibodeau, and Aiden Hutchinson. I think Hutchinson's in a league above his own, honestly. Um, like, if you were tiering these guys, I think it'd be Aiden Hutchinson in a tier alone, and then Kayvon in, a, in pretty much in a tier of his own, too. Um, realistically, I think probably this 5 block, I would say, are all potential all-pro players wherever they go. I mean, not that anybody else here isn't a potential all-pro player, but I think these five are pretty safe bets to be extremely good at the next level. Um, I don't know how I feel about anybody else down the board as much as I feel about those five being a lock to be really, really good. Um, and like I said, player number four on my board fell out of the draft entirely. And that is what's being reported, that Tyler Linderbaum is probably going to fall out of the first round. He shouldn't, but that's just what's being said. Um, I hope he doesn't. I hope he slips in, because I think it's a mistake for him not to. Obviously, he's at four on my board. Um, sorry that I couldn't get around to a top 100 board. Uh, it's currently fin uh, essentially finals week for my college. So, uh, stressed, not a lot of time on my hands. Didn't get around to it. It was going to take too much time for views that weren't going to be there. Uh, and I just couldn't do it. So anyways, I do hope you guys enjoyed. And I will see you guys in the next video of whatever I make. Peace.